Weekend stock market talk for April 2nd, 2023. We know that we're getting ready to start a new market open at a new quarter. So the market closed on Friday. It's going to open on Monday. We're going to be at the start of a new quarter. We're kind of getting ready to go into a new month. We know historically April is going to be bullish on the S&P 500 index seasonality pattern. I would also look for seasonality on the queues and also seasonality on the Dow in the month of April over maybe a 10 year period or maybe a 20 year period. We want to figure out whether or not we follow that seasonality pattern or we're going to do something opposite. And we also know going into May, we have what we call sell in May and go away. Also from a seasonality standpoint, the market is going to be closed on Friday because of good Friday. So we're going to get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no market activity on Friday. You want to make sure that you factor that in if you're buying contracts because your contract will state you can, the contract will state that it's going to expire on Friday, but it won't expire on Friday because you won't be able to get out of it on Friday, right? Saying that because they're going to exercise a contract on Monday, but you will not be able to get out of the contract on Friday because the market's going to be closed. Therefore, if you get into a weekly, you have four days as opposed to five, right? I think we're going to see lower volume this week because of the shorter week. I don't think a lot of people are going to really be heavily in this market, but I could be wrong. However, I just think that because of the holiday and how many people are going to participate in this holiday, even though everybody doesn't celebrate this particular holiday, I think that we can see lower volume, especially on the indexes. We may see specific companies take off, but I think on certain indexes, we're probably going to see a lot lower volume overall, right? A lot of people probably may just sleepwalk through this whole week. Going to earnings. So because top of the quarter, we're doing our first earnings run. Not a lot here. I'm going to look at ConAgra. Also going to look at Levi's WD-40, right? But not a lot here, right? Because we're getting ready to just start off our earnings run. Going into the economic calendar on Monday, Fed president speaking. Fed Governor Cook speaks at 4 15 p.m. Tuesday, we got factory orders, job openings. Uh, Wednesday, ADP employment, trade balance. Thursday, jobless claims. Another Fed president speaks. Then Friday, U.S. employment report. Unemployment rate, average hourly raises. However, it doesn't matter what happens on Friday because why? The market's going to be closed. So you're not going to get a positive or negative reaction to the data because of the close in the market. So then that's going to get pushed into next week, right? So that's kind of what you want to understand is that we're dealing with a shorter week. However, we're going into a historical um, bullish pattern. And what I would look for is how do we trade this week over the last, let's say five years. And you know, you can go look on charts and find that during this week over the past five years, how do we trade this week? Now I know how we traded it last year, but I would look for every year except last year. Right, because you know last year was pretty much a downturn for pretty much the majority of the year, especially early in the spring. Okay, so I just want people to really factor in short week, but historically we're going into a bullish trend. So what we could see this week is maybe setting the stage for that bullish run. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the spy real quick. And what we've seen is since about mid month, we've kind of gone onto a bullish pattern. We've had some resistance inside that pattern, but it's been fairly bullish over turn. And what we're going to do is continue to see, are we going to keep going back up towards that 420? It's taken us a long time to get there, but it's been very gradual. But it reminds me of this period here in what we call late December. We consolidated in January. We moved all the way back up to it. We hit this uh, around 420. We started consolidating. We sold back down and we kind of are going through a similar pattern. It's not really, really aggressive, but it is very, very gradual. You do have some days of selling, but it just seems to be going back up in a bullish trend. And we could, we talked about before, we could just be very range bound for the next year. We're getting ready to come out of this, we're out of the first quarter. We're getting ready to go into the second quarter. And I'm not really seeing anything that's going to really drive the market. A lot of people are still feeling like, well, you know what? The market is kind of overbought. It's kind of still inflated. I'm just not really seeing that yet. What I'm seeing is just a lot of trend bound or, or, or very much a lot of range bound trading. I don't really think there's a narrative on the market that cause it to go very violently in any direction. It just seems to be very gradual right now in, a, in a, what I call like a bullish trend. And so what a lot of people are doing is having success just trading within those trend ranges. But there's really not what I call a breakout. But we understand the market trades 
within a range, probably 70 to 80% of the time. Breakouts are probably around 20%. The breakouts can be very powerful, they can be very profitable, but a lot of times the majority of trading activity is gonna be range bound. And that's why a lot of times it can be very, very uh, important to find where you think your ranges are and then try to observe whether or not, you know, what you created your ranges, whether or not price activity stays within those particular ranges. Let's go to the QQQ. We've seen that we bounced above this, we broke this, what we call resistance level at around 305, 306. We broke above it. So we're gonna have another resistance level at around, where is this? Let's say three, 320, right? And we wanna figure out during this week, we talked about before it's gonna be a short week. Are we gonna reject that? Are we gonna keep moving back up to this other resistance level at around 332, let's say maybe to uh, 335, right? But we was able to get above this. So now this is gonna be our support. What we're seeing in the tech space is that this is kind of kind of kind of be the place where people are gonna, in my opinion, look to put their money in. Why? One is worked before. Okay. Um, the narrative around tech, it to me it's it's sexy, it's attractive, it's different, it creates differentiation. And so what we're gonna kind of see is that this is where people are gonna now start talking about well, we can probably get a return on capital here, because everything's gonna be about AI. And they're going to use that narrative, in my opinion, to get more and more people to sink money into tech. But if you notice, these aren't new companies, they're old companies, right? But they're trying to figure out how to attract new money. So now they've created this tech narrative. And so what we're going to continue to observe with the cues is that, are we going to go back to this level here? Are we going to get back to this 350 level? Or are we going to get back to this, let's say 367, 370 level? We have a lot of levels that we can go up to because this just right here is March of 2022, right here where I have the cursor. Therefore, we have a lot of levels that we can get to before we even get close to where we were at around that 400 level uh, in early 2022 before we started to really sell off aggressively. However, same thing. It's just a very gradual move up, right? We started this in early March and just very gradually moved off, had some consolidation, and kept moving back up. Do I think certain tech companies are overvalued? Yes, Nvidia has a massive um, price earnings, especially forward, right? What, the way they're gonna have to perform in the future is ridiculous, but it doesn't matter, right? The narrative around them is so strong to where people are buying it. And if people are buying it, they're buying it. And that's what you gotta kinda really understand. It may not make sense to you, but it doesn't matter if it makes sense to people that are willing to pay for it, right? And that's kind of how we're looking at everything. So what we're gonna to continue to do is just observe it. And I think this month, in my opinion, will probably be bullish. And then we may find a reason historically to sell off again in May, and then we'll just start building back up. But until I get like some really negative data points, right? Um, I don't see any reason why the market's going to all of a sudden now just start slamming everybody down, even though it could happen. I think the 20, the 0.25% uh, federal funds rate increase in the next meeting has already been factored in. I think people still think that Powell is going to eventually reverse sometime this year. And until we get really strong evidence of maybe a credit crunch, I don't see any reason why people are going to be fearful, right? especially long-term. So what we're going to continue to do is just observe it, but understand what we're seeing is a lot of really range bound activity. And I want to really encourage people to make sure that when they're looking at their uh, trading opportunities, that they try to find the ranges as opposed to just thinking that we're going to get these massive breakouts. I think that was very much a big part of 2020. Um, it very much was, a, even when we saw the sell off in 2022, it was done very methodically, right? And that's something that I was talking about with, uh, Chastity. Um, she told me like, this is being done very methodical. Cause I thought it would just slam it down and take all the air out of it and build it back up. But if you notice in 2023, they took their time doing it. It was very methodical. They may take their time building this market back up. Just do it very methodically at a very measured pace. Um, and just keep building up over time or we can see the opposite. But until I see the opposite, to me, especially for this month, I'm looking for this month to be bullish. And we may have some red days in it because you know everybody's gonna take profit. 
But until I start seeing a narrative around it, I don't know if these other stories are going to cause people to leave the U.S. equities market. To me, they're just stories, right? I think this is probably going to be a very slow week because of the holiday. A lot of people being preoccupied and being a short week. And a lot of people maybe not even really working the full week in anticipation of the holiday. For people that don't follow the holiday, you know, some people based on their religion, they're not going to follow this holiday. I understand that. However, I just think because we're dealing with a short market week, Friday being an off week, a lot of people are not going to want to sit in their positions over a long weekend. So therefore, they'll probably be looking to get out of their positions early this week if they effort, if they enter into anything early, which a lot of times can probably slow down market activity. So what I would look for is lower market volume, especially on the indexes, because most people are probably going to just be on autopilot. And then I think once we get off this holiday, we can get right back to it. Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.